So as I wrap up the programming series videos, I want to talk a little bit about uh, when you do programming, what should you be doing before you do programming? Because that's actually the most important time is before you start writing code to take that step back and think about what it is you're trying to do, what it is you're trying to write, and more importantly, how you're going to write it. You know, put some thought into the architecture a little bit. I wanted to show an example about kind of why this is important. Uh, so you saw me on this channel before uh, building a version of, of the Sinet game. It was simple Sinet. Uh, and that was an, a neat game to make because it was kind of a 30 uh, square board and it ran a backwards S pattern. And so I did have to put some thought into how we're going to draw each of those different squares. Someone had asked me on this channel if I would uh, create a version of the Royal Game of Ur. I didn't have much interest in that, but it turns out actually I do. So I'm actually writing a version for myself. I don't know that I'm going to have a lot of time to finish it uh, because I'm writing a book and things like that, but uh, I wanted to kind of talk about some of the thought process I put into uh, writing that version of the Royal Game of Ur. Now, if you don't know what the Royal Game of Ur is, uh, this is what a Royal Game of Ur board looks like. So this is from Wikipedia. It's under public domain. Uh, and so uh, it's uh, it is 20 squares. And uh, you start on the, the let's say, player one uh, would start on those uh, four squares on the bottom right. Uh, and you would move uh, from the, the left square of those four all the way to the right. And then you go down the middle from the right-hand side down to the left. And then uh, you go into the other squares, uh, the, the bottom two. Uh, player two would start in, let's say, the upper part of the, the, those uh, uh, squares on the right-hand side. Those that, uh, that, that top row, of those four squares, uh, would move along their own set of four squares until they would uh, run down the middle, uh, which is obviously the area that you're competing with, with the other player. And at the end, they would turn off onto those two uh, other squares and uh, you know the first player to move off all seven of their pieces uh, wins and so the board the goal is obviously it's sort of a racing game but you're competing on that central line uh, now as I was creating this um, I thought well how am I gonna how am I gonna have the the, the game run I, the great thing about Sinet uh, was it was uh, just a board that ran uh, you know, it was 30 squares and it was in a rectangle. Well, this one's not a rectangle, so how am I going to do it? I thought, uh, let me bring up the uh, little bit of my code here. I thought that I would probably uh, create a, uh, a grid uh, that didn't necessarily have to be in order. Sinet, it was in order. It went from 0 to 29. But in this one, it doesn't need to be in order because they're not following the same path. So what if I just created a grid and... Uh, numbered it however I wanted, uh, and then had a separate array that would uh, track the progression for player one and another array that would track the progression or the path for player two. So you can see here I've got some notes on uh, the actual board layout, and then down here uh, the two lists of uh, movement for player one and player two. Uh, there's also some squares that are important for uh, free turns, but I don't need to talk about it in this video. So I want to talk about why did I choose to lay out the board uh, this way, where basically it's the, the left-hand block of six, the middle two squares on their own, and then the right-hand block of 12? Why did I choose to name it uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, and then 8 through 19? Why did I choose to do it that way as opposed to like on the top row going like, you know, 0, one and then over here two three four right and why did i why did i choose to do it this way as opposed to doing it sort of a straight uh zero one two three four well let me show you why let me actually exit this program let me go to as easy as i'm gonna bring up a spreadsheet so uh let's let's talk about uh what happens when you when you organize a board the way that I've chosen to organize the board. So you remember from my comment uh, block on the uh, on that board.c file, I had the numbers listed as 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5. And then down the middle, I had 6, 7. And then up here, I had 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And again, player one 
might start here on 16. That's where they you, know, you take your pieces from off the board. You put them on 16. You start on 16. Uh, if you have a throw of four, let's say you go from one, two, three, four. And then if you have a throw of four after that, you go one, two, three, four. Four after that, one, four. And then three after that would be one, two, three to move off. Uh, and so um, I'm not going in any particular numerical order. Uh, as I said, there will be another list that will track um, the, the order of progression for each of the players. But why did I group it like this? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Well, it, because uh, the math ends up working out really well. So let's look at uh, the math that I did for the X chord. Uh, it really made sense looking at the left-hand block and the right-hand block. So on this uh, uh, left-hand block, I'm able to do math uh, in, the, in the function that is basically doing a modulo. So I'm able to say, uh, and then from there, I kind of figure out basically how, how wide is a square. Uh, there's some other stuff around there. But you know, the important thing is, can I get the x to be 0 or 1, depending on column, uh, the left column of these, uh, of these squares or the right column? Right, I want these over here to be uh, ending up to be a zero, and I want these to be one. And so that's why modulo ends up being a very handy uh, function to do. By the way, the function to do that in as easy as is add mod. And so uh, a1, that's the upper left-hand corner, we're going to do a modulo of two. Uh, and that's going to give me a very handy zero value. Let's go ahead and uh, let's copy that cell from there over to there that uh modulo of since it changed the reference so modulo of b1 uh by two so it's this one divided by two is going to be a remainder of one uh not surprisingly if i do a copy of uh that cell and let's move it down to uh a8 to b9 look at that uh the references have been changed up there just showing you that the references and sure enough, anything that's in the left-hand column of this block of six is going to be zero, and over here it's going to be one. So that means I can very easily uh, figure out the x coordinate for those by saying, "All right, so uh, the uh, math and figure out um, you know the the uh, zero or one, and then I can multiply that times uh, some stuff and and add some stuff to create some offsets and uh, widths of each square." So it's very easy way to figure out an x coordinate over here on the on the right hand side uh i'm going to do a, a different modulo a modulo of four and so we're going to do at mod of e1 by four look there's my zero and then i'm going to do copy that cell and we'll put it for, uh, into f7 to h7 and look at that. Very conveniently, I'm able to do very easy math that says 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Do some other math around that, and I can very easily come up with an x coordinate on the screen uh, that will position uh, these squares appropriately. So I'm going to basically have one if block that says, hey, if it's on the left hand side, do this math. And if it's on the right hand side, if it's from 8 to 19, basically, if the square is, you know, 5 or less and do this math, or if it's eight or more, then do that math. And then I'm just gonna do some other quick, easy math for these two here. Uh, let's, by the way, let's, let's finish this out and copy these, uh, these cells to E8 to uh, H9. And you can see that again, my math is uh, carrying forward a very uh, nice zero, one, three. So uh, that's, that's why that math is, uh, is working out the way it is. And so, uh, you know, put some thought into how you're going to organize that. Uh, that also means, by the way, uh, calculating Y coordinates. So the rows, uh, what do the rows look like? So I want to, again, I, to make my math easy, I want to have uh, this first row of these two. Uh, that one should be, let's say, a zero. And then the, these, these should be a one, just to eventually calculate to be a one. That should eventually calculate to be a two. And same thing over here, right? This this row should be uh, calculated to be a zero. Down here should be calculated to be one, and down here should be calculated to be two. Let's look at that y coordinate. Because then I, again, I can do some math around that to figure out what the y coordinate is. And so over here, I'm just going to do integer math. Uh, well, 
spreadsheets will want to do floating point math. So we'll force this into uh, an integer using the at int function. Uh, and then we'll do uh, a1 divided by 2. And so, yeah, look at that. It says 0. And I'll do a copy cell from there to there. So, yep, anything that's on the first row, uh, b1 or a1, that's going to give me a 0. We'll do a copy cell again. That range to a14 and p14, oh, 15. And again, yeah, just moving through, you can see the uh, upper left, you can see the references are definitely a bit changed. Uh, so yeah, anything that's on that first row is going to be a zero. Anything on the second row is going to be a one. Anything on the third row will be a two. Same thing up here. Uh, let's, uh, again, I'm relying on integer math, but I just like to do floating points. We'll force it into integer using int. And uh, this time we're just going to subtract uh, that e1, uh, subtract 8. To divide that uh, amount by 4. I have to do it up here. Um, integer value of e1, subtract 8, and then divide the whole thing by 4. But it's the integer value of that whole thing. Let's go ahead and copy that cell from there to f13, h13. See, just confirming I move through those. Those references in my cell have changed. And so that first row is always going to be zero. Let's go ahead and copy that cell, that first row, to e14, h15. Yep, and you can see that anything that's on that second row, so 12 through 15, that math is going to work out to a 1. And anything that's 16 to 19, where's 16 to 18? That's going to give me y value over there. Again, if the, uh, if the square is uh, uh, square 6 or 7, uh, I know exactly what y value that's going to be. That's going to be hard-coded. No math required on that one. Only to do new math to figure out what the, uh, the x value is, and that's a very easy thing to do. So uh, this will be very easy math to do uh, just by uh, saying, hey, is, it, uh, uh, is the square number uh, 5 or less? Then Great. Then figure out the x and y uh, using uh, this math down here. Uh, or is the square number 8 or more? Okay, great. Then do the x and y using this math and that math. And then again, if it's else, if it's not 5 or less, or it's not uh, 8 or more, then I know it's going to be 6 or 7, and then I have the other math that will figure out um, the value x and y. Because again, y is a hard-coded value, and x is just a very simple math. That point. So again, it's just uh, as before you start coding, uh, put some thought into uh, how you're going to write your program. And if you're doing something like going to display something on screen, then then do some math to figure out where it's going to go and how you're going to organize the things in your program uh, so that your program doesn't have to do a whole big block of if statements, uh, a whole big block of switch statements. It's just very simple math. This one's just going to have uh, three little if statements in it, and then from there it's going to do math. So very, very quickly it's going to uh, be able to calculate x and y. Uh, makes the program a lot faster. Uh, maybe it doesn't matter quite so much on DOS systems because it uh, should, should run pretty fast on modern hardware, but you know, let's, let's think hard about how you're going to display stuff and do your best to uh, make it uh, as fast as you can, as efficient as you can. Uh, that's really going to pay off as you uh, do higher order stuff. Uh, maybe you're going to do uh, 3D game programming later in life, and so that'll be uh, something that'll help you out there. Uh, by the way, before I close out of this, uh, if you uh, want to see more about the spreadsheet, there is a video on the, this channel about how to use as easy as and other spreadsheets. So uh, before I uh, leave, I just want to uh, thank everyone on Patreon who's been supporting me on this channel. You really do make this channel happen, and thank you very much for that support. Uh, some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you here, so thank you very much for that. Visit our website at freedos.org, follow us on Twitter, join us on Facebook, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.